you for coming. I appreciate this. This is um, uh, the Mentoring Working Group and You talk. Uh, my name is Nate Waddington. I am a uh, developer advocate with the CNCF. Uh, unfortunately, my co-speaker, uh, uh, Jay Kahima, couldn't make it today, but he did send a video along, so I'll let him introduce himself a little bit later on in the, um, in the presentation. So uh, just to start, um, what is the uh, mentoring working group? So when I started at the uh, CNCF a couple of years ago, I was brought on as a developer advocate, um, and my primary role was uh, technical writing, uh, helping um, projects uh, build out, organize, and write their, their documentation. And uh, a little bit further along, um, I became interested in uh, some of the mentorship work that uh, Ihor was doing, and so I started working with him. Uh, and then when he unfortunately had to step away and help uh, defend Ukraine, um, I uh, stepped into uh, the management of the CNCF mentorship program um, pretty fully at that point to, uh, to help out. Now, Ihor has some pretty big shoes to fill. Um, and so uh, we thought, well, maybe this isn't, um, maybe this is too much for one, one individual. And we thought, well, we are uh, an open source community and we thought the mentorship program can be uh, by the community and for the community. And that's the main idea of the, the mentorship working group. We uh, approached the um, TAG uh, contributor strategy uh, team and they agreed that this was likely a good spot uh, to house the mentorship uh, uh, working group. And so we put together um, a charter and um, sort of went through what we wanted out of a mentorship program. Um, and this, this is what we came up with for, for, for a mission statement. We want to encourage cloud native computing adoption by providing opportunities for a diverse group of new contributors to work on CF projects with experienced mentorship. And so we're looking for uh, we're looking to that point to have experienced mentors, and we want to help grow experienced mentors. We want to help grow projects uh, by bringing in new contributors um, who maybe haven't uh, ever contributed before, maybe who have. Um, we want to promote growth and sustainability of the projects through mentoring and uh, new uh, existing contributors. So we want the mentorship programs to help our projects grow in a sustainable way. We want to um, be able to encourage um, mentorship. We want uh, mentees to have a path to mentorship, to uh, maintainership. We want to help um, the entire uh, uh, contributor cycle through the mentorship program. And we want to provide support and advice to CNCF projects around mentorship uh, initiatives. Um, Again, this is a community. We want uh, people to be able to have questions and we want new mentors uh, and new projects that are coming on board to say, hey, how, how can I uh, participate in the mentorship program? What is a good proposal? What would be uh, a, a way to help recruit uh, mentees and such? Um, and so again, that was the mission statement, some of our goals, again, increasing uh, project participation in mentorship programs. Uh, we want to increase the number of CNCF projects and mentee participation in the LFX uh, program. Right now, we've got, on average, 14. Um, so in the, LFA, the CNCF LFX uh, program specifically, we've got about usually between 14 and 20 projects. Uh, and usually that's around about 10 so projects is a loaded term. Uh, there are many meanings for projects. So there are, there, there are about 14 mentorship programs running that represent about 10 projects per LFX semester, for instance. So I'd like to increase that. I'd like more projects to be able to uh, avail of them themselves of, 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 of this, uh, this program. Uh, I'd like to increase the quality of mentorship that CNCF projects provide across all of the mentorship uh, initiatives that we run. Um, and that includes feedback, that uh, includes um, figuring out how best to recruit strong mentees and how to bring mentees along um, uh, 
to, to ensure that they've got the best uh, experience as a mentee as we can. Um, explore uh, the quality of, uh, oh, I said mentorship. I was thinking menteeship. I should read my slides more uh, closely. This is my first talk in a very long time, so please bear with me. Uh, we also want to increase the quality of mentorship. Uh, so to that, uh, we'd like to potentially start looking at um, training programs for mentors. Uh, or not necessarily a program, that might be a too, too, too grandiose, but how can we help coach mentors to be mentors? Uh, this is something that we'd like to bake into the to, to this working group. Um, explore uh, opportunities for CNCF participation in new mentorship initiatives. Currently, we've got four uh, main programs, three main programs that we um, participate in in a regular basis. One program that we uh, participate in uh, irregularly and a new uh, program that we're just starting up. And so we're looking to see how we can, as a uh, community, figure out what programs like Google Summer of Code, uh, like Outreachy, what programs are valuable for our contributors and our projects and our uh, community. Uh, we want to increase the diversity of participants, uh, both mentees and mentors. Uh, we want to increase the types of projects that uh, we work through. Uh, and that includes both code and non-code. Uh, I like to tell people, yeah, we, we do a, a lot of technical uh, mentorships, but there's space for non-tech contributions. Uh, if you're a writer, if you're a designer, if you're a project manager even, there's likely uh, work for you. And if we can attract mentors uh, and mentees from various parts of um, our community to help mentor people in these non-traditional sort of spaces for us, non-traditional for us, um, I think that's fantastic. Um, uh, projects often come to me and say, I need help with my website. Uh, if we can bring on web designers, uh, that would be a spectacular uh, use of the mentorship program. And of course, do develop mentorship just generally uh, throughout our, our programs. Um, and this, the title of this talk is the, the, the mentorship, Mentoring Working Group and You. And like I said earlier, there's a lot of work to do. We set this up because it's probably too much for one individual is why I've got a, 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 a co-chair. Um, and we went to the um, contributor experience group because we, we need to recruit folks who can help with the mentorship program, not just um, offering to have their project do mentorship, that's important too, but I would very much like to bring people into the program and part of that is, is recognizing what the benefits are to the, to the projects. Uh, we're able to bring in new contributors and again, the goal of the mentorship program is to bring those new contributors in and have them stay. Uh, I would very much like to, in future, start getting statistics around what our graduates' uh, job prospects are. Are they um, getting, um, are they first off contributing a year later, six months later? Are they using this to, to, to uh, get work in other places? Um, better documentation is another uh, big um, opportunity. I think that we can uh, reach out to communications programs um, and folks like that uh, and try to get uh, 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 the documentation. I, I, I very much like it when developers write documentation, but I can see that sometimes uh, they need help and this is a great opportunity to do that. Uh, diversity, again, the more, the more people, the more types of people we bring in, uh, the stronger we are. Um, and I, I think another opportunity or another um, bonus for participating as a project is again if you're if your um, primary career is as a developer it will help develop uh, leadership skills and these are the types of things that you can to your your promo packs and whatnot and you can I, I would be very interested to see how um, mentors uh, report this and uh, how mentorship helps 
mentors careers throughout um, the process. So the programs that we are currently working on, or working with, uh, I'll go, I'm not gonna go quite in this order. Uh, we have the uh, Google Summer of Code, uh, which is a, a fairly large uh, program, and the CNCF joins that as an org member, generally. And so what that means is we help organize uh, our projects to write the proposals uh, and recruit folks to um, apply. But it is Google's program, and uh, so they are looking for very uh, new people to um, open source uh, in terms of mentors. But in terms of um, uh, the projects, any CNCF project, um, incubating, uh, sandbox or, or graduated can apply uh, and we can uh, we can help with that process uh, they run this once a year um, and we just uh, we just finished it uh, well, actually I shouldn't say we just finished it we have finished uh, I think 17 of 18 projects uh, and one of the things that uh, Google has changed for this year is the ability uh, to be flexible so uh, a couple of the projects actually asked for extensions based on the work that uh, the mentee and the mentor were doing. Uh, and when they both agree, we're able to extend a project for almost two months. So we, we do have still one, one project uh, uh, standing uh, on the Google Summer of Code for this year. The Season of Docs is another great program that uh, Google is running. Uh, this one, I believe we could also run as uh, an org this year uh, due to um, <laughs> time constraints. Um, we actually asked individual projects to uh, participate as individual projects. So we had, I think, five uh, projects this year um, participate in Google Summer of Docs. And again, even if I don't have, if, if we don't have the capacity to uh, be an org, that doesn't mean that we just go away and aren't, aren't going to help. If you've got questions about how to run the process or how to apply or uh, um, even, even um, looking at mentee applications and such, we can help with that type of thing. Uh, Outreachy is a uh, project that uh, specializes in um, bringing uh, folks who are um, uh, um, <laughs> uh, uh, Outreachy, Outreach's primary goal is to increase diversity in tech. And so they um, are looking for folks uh, of color. They are looking for folks from different regions. They are looking for uh, women to participate, uh, people of different uh, sexual orientations and whatnot. Uh, and this is a uh, project which is um, mostly driven from the project level, uh, but we are looking for help. Uh, we are currently looking for somebody uh, to help us uh, administrate this program from the CNCF side. So this is uh, something we're, we're, we've been participating in um, infrequently, but we want to increase our, um, our uh, um, uh, footprint there. Uh, and then there, lastly, is the LFX, um, the CNCF LFX mentorship. Uh, and this is the one that we run in-house. And so this is actually the most flexible of the um, projects. And these are all paid, uh, I should mention, these are all paid uh, programs for the mentees. So um, the mentees all get paid uh, for usually like a four, three or four month um, uh, term. And so because we are running this, uh, this is where uh, we can really be creative with how we want to run a mentorship. If you've got an idea about uh, a mentorship that doesn't fit a traditional tech model, run it by us. We've got, um, we've got folks who are uh, interested in helping out and, and helping um, projects to get some of these uh, projects, like I said, uh, designers, uh, 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 project managers, doc, doc writers. Um, we can, we can uh, facilitate that type of work. Um, again, because we run it, uh, some of the um, terms can be flexible. Uh, if if uh, it's possible to do like an eight-month term, if, uh, if that was uh, something of, of value. Uh, so now I would like to, and again, bear with me here because um, 
Jay um, just sent me the video last night. The other thing that we're doing is we're looking at expanding into new um, uh, programs. And we have, uh, we're working with uh, Jay Tahima out of uh, New Zealand uh, with II. And this is the first, I believe, regional mentorship program that we've uh, started working on uh, to see if we can do um, mentorship in a specific place and use that as a template to encourage mentorship and mentee in other places. So I'm going to let Jay introduce himself here. Um, doo -doo -doo, and we're gonna go back to slideshow. Kaupoa ki runga, kaupoa ki raro, kia mau, kia ita, kia ita, kia mau. Kia tū, kia tū, tauana, tauana, i hoki mai tō mauri, i hara mai tō mauri, haumie, huie, taeke. Ko ruhere te maunga, ko rangitika i te awa, ko rohaupo te waka, ko ngati apa te iwi, ko ngati kauwai te hapu, mō whanganui a hau, ko JT mō tō korunua. Kia ora kiko, I'm Detroit, my name is Jay, I'm a community lead for IINZ and co-chair of the Mentoring Working Group under CNCF. Before I kick off, I just want to give a quick thank you for this opportunity. It's my first time being able to speak at QCon and I'm really great, grateful for the opportunity. I also want to give a shout out to Hippie and the rest of my team from II who's currently in attendance and also shout out to my brother Nate who's representing in my absence. For anyone who's wondering about my introduction, um, so a brief karakia or prayer to open things up and also my pepeha or an introduction, both of which are, uh, can be pretty customary down here in New Zealand um, or Aotearoa, also known as the land of the long white cloud. Um, so I was invited on board with II roughly six months ago to help with developing an indigenous mentoring program to support Māori into uh, tech pathways and open source. It was a bit of a challenge because um, my background is not in tech at all, so it's a huge learning curve for me and also there's, there's low overall uh, Indigenous representation in the tech space. Roughly 4% for Māori, around 2.5% for Pacific Islanders and for other underrepresented groups such as women, sitting around 27%. Um, there's a lot of groundwork for uh, us to do in terms of how we can bridge that gap. And also in general, just really limited awareness of people around what open source and cloud even is and how it might benefit communities. So from there, my team and I, we uh, adopted um, a te ao Māori or Māori worldview approach um, with a modified design thing methodology to better understand that space. Um, what, are, what are the barriers and, and sticking points for people and perhaps ideating some solutions? So, we created things like learning resources and providing uh, partners into training and certification, marketing strategies, and even providing um, professional development for local high school teachers. Most critical to that was working alongside local community education providers, industry, and government to help bridge that gap. Uh, we took part in the annual career expo to better understand um, what do people know. So talking to local schools, students, uh, teachers, businesses, families, homeschoolers, um, whoever, just to introduce them to things like Linux and open source and Raspberry Pi and Kubernetes. And for a lot of people, it was their first time even hearing some of these sorts of things. So really good learning for us in terms of what better steps do we need to take to help, um, you know, talk about how career options in that, in that direction might be a little bit more attainable and accessible, accessible for people. Um, from there, we developed our own event called Straight to the Source, which is a lot more focused. We're working with the local girls' high school to try and understand how we could um, strengthen the connection between education and industry. So we're talking about uh, certifications in Kubernetes, things like Women in Linux and LFX mentorships, and again, working alongside local businesses, uh, council and universities to try and understand that space collaboratively. From there, we pretty much determined that it's probably too soon to develop a specialised mentoring program. So instead, at the moment, we're trying to um, broaden pathways into digital tech for Māori in general. So 
we want to develop more tangible pro projects where people can see the benefits and practice and then understand why different training opportunities are going to be really critical and be able to support that. So things like community digital infrastructure, both here in Tauranga and in rural areas like Tokoroa, partnering with national cloud providers and, and we're in the process of hopefully developing a curriculum for secondary and high school, uh, tertiary learners, sorry, um, to be able to, again, provide more relevant industry direct training for people to step into and also supporting them into existing development opportunities like LFX and Google Summer of Code. So if anyone would like to support us, um, we're more than keen to be able to connect and learn from other people's expertise in terms of how can we map the pathways better. Uh, most people aren't even uh, familiar with concepts like contribution, so that would be really beneficial for us to help shape that messaging. And not just so that people can um, pursue career pathways in tech, but just that they belong and how transformational it can be for their communities in general. Um, open source is really inspiring for me personally in terms of what it's um, the values and tenets that it's built upon and how they might be able to help people with all areas of, of our lives. Um, that's pretty much it for me. Um, just to close out, I'll leave with a short whakatoki or Māori proverb. Uh, Nā ku te roro, no te roro, ka ora ai te iwi. Which means, with your contribution and my contribution, the community will thrive. Thank you for your time. Nō reira i te whānau, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou kā. So I dropped my mic, so I'm just going to try and put this back on without making too much noise. Um, is that okay? Can we still? Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, so how can you help? Please help. <laughs> um, proposals are welcome. Um, we have opened up, uh, we've set up our um, first term of next year. And uh, if you go to this uh, URL, uh, github.com uh, cncf mentoring, and I'll let you read the rest of it. Uh, we have set up um, 2023-01 March through May. Generally speaking, um, so this is for the LFX um, mentorship program. Um, the uh, proposals um, session opens on January 16th, I believe. Uh, but uh, because this is the one that we run, we are happy to be a little bit flexible. So if, if um, a project uh, has a, a proposal that they want to um, suggest earlier than that, I'm not gonna turn it away. Um, so uh, the other uh, efforts that we're uh, currently looking at, um, currently our uh, GitHub repo is, um, well, there's a lot there. Uh, so we're looking at cleaning that up and making sure that it is uh, something that we can send folks to and immediately have it be obvious what the next step should be, whether or not they're a mentor, whether or not they're a mentee, whichever programs that they're looking to do. Um, we are also looking for help on advisory documentation. Uh, if you are a writer or if you um, are somebody who is um, uh, an experienced mentor, uh, we'd like to have a discussion about what makes what makes a good mentor, what makes a good proposal, what makes a good uh, mentorship uh, experience. Um, we'd also like to potentially consider um, uh, mentoring uh, review uh, and and, and um, pairing mentors uh, to help each other uh, in the mentorship uh, process. Uh, and there's uh, quite a few. Uh, uh, um, other uh, things that we're, we're, we're looking for, um, potentially an opportunities board um, where folks can, can look for um, uh, projects who are looking for help that uh, is maybe a little bit longer running than um, uh, just a, a mentorship term. But the, come chat with us. If you've got um, an interest in mentorship, we'd be very, very happy to, to, to see you and uh, how to see us. <laughs> um, again, uh, CNCF mentoring uh, repo is the prime uh, repo for us. Uh, there's a discussions board there that I'm really encouraging folks to use. Uh, we have a lot of uh, newcomers in asking questions about how to get started and such like that. And that's where I also make, uh, we also make uh, announcements about upcoming uh, programs and uh, deadlines and uh, have discussions about what, uh, what to do next. Um, 
if you're on the CNCN Slack, join, CNCF Slack, uh, join us at Tag Contributor Strategy Channel. Um, and that's, that's where we are doing most of our discussion around the planning for, for this. Uh, we also have uh, monthly meetings, and uh, those are currently actually running twice a month uh, while we're in our startup phase here, um, but they'll be pared back down to uh, every second Tuesday of the month at uh, 8 p.m. UTC. Um, and I've, if you've got a picture, then you can, um, uh, it's a, that, that, that link is a bit of a mouthful. So um, I also wanted to try and keep this uh, short, a uh, short talk, uh, because I wanted to ask you, or rather, I wanted to give everyone an opportunity to ask questions. This is a new program. I'm very curious uh, what your thoughts are, uh, what your questions are. Um, Brad, if you uh, could maybe check the online as well and see if we've got the online. Nothing online? Okay, well, does anybody in the room have a question? <laughs> well, please, Brad. Um, so I was a mentor in the GSOC this year, and um, one thing I found is that there's a, the student word is used a lot, and I feel like it puts a lot of, let's say if you're doing a career change, or you're, you know, you're not a student, but you still want to be a beginner and start contributing. Right. Is there any strategy to sort of make it easier for people that aren't just a student as well? So I just, just so I understand, I'm going to repeat what I think you asked. Um, uh, asking about folks who are not just students, but who are maybe early in their career, uh, who are at a point in their career where they're just starting in tech um, and are interested in, in, in joining. That's a, I think I just love my, uh, that's a very good question. Uh, for instance, the, the Google um, Summer of Code project is very specifically for people who are new to open source. Um, but the LFX program, in contrast to that, has got a quite a bit wider um, intake uh, uh, process. And so we don't, in the LFX uh, mentorship program, we don't have any rules about age or student status or anything along those lines. So if somebody is um, uh, starting a new career or is um, interested for, for, for some other reason to, to, to be a part of the, the community, uh, those, those mentees are certainly welcome. Um, and again, the, the process for, for application would be very, very similar because again, we don't, we don't tend to look at the um, uh, life um, uh, uh, state <laughs> when we're looking for, for, for mentees. Anyone else have a Maybe I give a, oh. We have a mic coming. The stage is quite squeaky. Yeah, I think you may have already answered uh, my question with uh, the last answer. But I was curious, like, um, it sounds like there would be a place for folks that are, um, you know, maybe they're already in the tech industry. They've been around for a while, but they've worked at a company that's, like, primarily uh, closed source. And they're trying to get, like, more involved upstream because it sounds like there's a place for mentees like that. Yeah, absolutely. If somebody's uh, changing career, or if they're looking to, if they're becoming interested in in open source, it, it's a different paradigm for sure. Um, and again, I don't, I don't think that there are any rules around um, age in uh, the LFX uh, mentorship program, and again, that speaks to our um, desire to have a more diverse. Um, intake. We're, we're looking for, for, for people of all types. I think Josh may have a, an answer or a question for him. Yeah, I'm, I'm Josh Burkus. I'm a uh, TAG Contributor Strategy Co-Chair and I've also been both an LFX and an Outreachy um, uh, mentor. Um, the, um, for people looking for career change, LFX, both LFX and Outreachy are very open to that. Outreachy specifically is looking for women who are having a career change such as into tech. Um, it's a very common profile for an outreachy uh, mentee. Yeah. Um, although for people who are not students, one of the things we really look at is availability. Because obviously if somebody's having a career change, there's a question of, hey, 
are you actually going to be able to finish a seven week mentorship thing? Um, uh, which, you know, is maybe not full time, but certainly, you know, at least, you know, 15, you know, 20 hours a week. Yeah. That's a good point, yes. Um, I think, again, though, the, the, there's opportunities for, for potentially longer um, internships as well. Uh, I, I actually encourage uh, folks who are um, applying to be mentees to um, look and, and try to start contributing. If, if there's a good first issue, uh, there's nothing stopping somebody applying uh, to be a mentee on a project to start contributing even before they've uh, applied or as a part of the uh, application process. It's a very good way for mentees to uh, start developing a rapport with the, the maintainers who might be looking for, for help. We have another question? Yeah, I do. So I'm looking from a mentor perspective. So to apply to the Bellfx mentorship program, when we propose a project over there, do we need to have mentors available? Is that how um, the process works? So for the, the LFX mentorship program, um, in order to, to propose a, a, a project, uh, the project needs to have a maintainer involved somehow. Um, and you can have multiple mentors because we don't wanna, we don't wanna necessarily burden maintainers with a lot of extra work. Um, so what'll often happen is we'll have two or three Maintain, uh, people um, as mentors with one um, maintainer as, as sort of uh, sort of the, the the coach, I suppose. Um, so there is a requirement that uh, a maintainer is a part of the process, but they don't necessarily have to be the primary mentor. Uh, and so if you if you if you're if you're working on a project and you have an idea for um, uh, a mentorship project, but you aren't a maintainer then I recommend speaking to your project's maintainer so that we can start the process of, of application. Does that answer the question? Yeah. Yep. Thank you. How are we doing on time, Brad? We're 12.27. 12.27, so we've got a couple more minutes if we have anybody else has a question. Otherwise, we can give you three minutes back. Josh? I wanted to make a, another comment for this. Is um, Nate mentioned this earlier, but right now we've we've been starting with the you know primarily student new career et cetera mentorship programs like um, LFX outreach et cetera. But the plan is to, as we have volunteer effort available, uh, expand this into helping projects with doing other types of mentorship, mm -hmm. such as mentoring somebody who you know knows how to program already. They're just a first time contributor to your project. Right, and they need to know how to get contributions into your project, which is a standard kind of mentorship. But most projects don't have anything set up other than you know hop on Slack and ask questions, right. um, which doesn't work for everybody who wants to join your project. Um, the um, so the plan is to actually look at not just you know the the new contributor and the paid mentorships, but to move into other forms of mentorship that projects need. Um, and, you know, for anybody who's, who's listening, if that's an interesting area for you and an area where you know something about doing mentorships in general, um, we could really use more people in the, in the working group to kick that off um, and, and to get, you know, sort of train them, mentor the mentors going. Yeah. Thank you for that. That's a very good point. Uh, so any other, any other questions just before I close this up? No? Thank you all for coming. I really appreciate it. Have a good rest of your cube time, okay?